Hi, I'm Dr. Yuling Li, an education professor, and in this video we'll explore 10 most noteworthy education studies of the year. From groundbreaking insights into the role of AI in learning, to the question of whether so-called pandemic babies really do struggle with basic skills, I'm unpacking what the research tells us about the state of education today. All links to research studies are in the description. The first study is the OECD's Education at a Glance 2024. This edition shines a spotlight on equity in education. Some highlights. While educational progress is notable around the world, like the reduction in youth not in education to 14%, learning outcomes remain a concern, with stagnant or declining proficiency among 15-year-olds in core subjects. Social economic disparity persists, and women outperform men academically, yet face significant employment and wage gaps. Many countries struggle to recruit qualified teachers, especially in disadvantaged areas, highlighting a critical challenge for equitable education. To tackle these challenges, the OECD emphasizes robust policies to improve early childhood education, address teacher shortages, and bridge gender and social economic gaps. For more, check out the full report. What is joy? In the context of this second research study, Joy is the deep satisfaction and excitement students feel when they discover, understand, and achieve something meaningful in their learning journey. So they analyzed 25 student narratives and found four essential ingredients for a joyful learning environment. Joy comes from mastering new concepts, overcoming difficulties, and seeing one's growth through tangible achievements. Students feel joy when they make decisions about their learning while staying open to new ideas and challenges. Joy thrives when students feel connected to peers and teachers, fostering collaboration and a sense of belonging. Teachers are key to joyful learning, creating varied, inclusive, and well-structured learning experiences while maintaining enthusiasm and care. So the study emphasizes that joy isn't just a nice addition, it's a powerful driver of lifelong learning. For educators, the challenge is to design environments that balance structure with freedom, support with challenge, and autonomy with community. This study dives into the brain's role in learning, showing how structured interaction between teachers and students in a flipped classroom isn't just good practice, it's a game changer. Researchers compared three teaching methods, traditional lecture-based teaching, a control model with video lectures and spontaneous interaction, and a flipped classroom model with video lectures and structured teacher-student interaction afterwards. The results, the flipped classroom outperformed the other methods in improving student learning, but here's the kicker. Using advanced brain imaging technology, the study found increased interbrain synchrony, a neural connection between teacher and student in the flipped classroom setting. This synchrony was strongest in regions linked to cognitive engagement and collaboration, and it directly correlated with better learning outcomes. The takeaway for educators, structured intentional interaction isn't just effective, it's essential. So plan your discussions to guide students through questions and feedback can elevate both engagement and comprehension in the classroom. Nature is often hailed as a bomb for the mind, but can it really improve mental health for children in schools? A recent study investigated this through the Open Sky School Program, a 12-week initiative where students spend two hours a week learning outdoors. The results? For most students, no significant reduction in mental health symptoms was found. However, there's a twist. Children with higher baseline mental health challenges saw a modest improvement such as reduced anxiety and better social behavior. The study underscores the promise of nature for at-risk students, even if broader benefits weren't measurable in the short term. Experts suggest that deeper, longer-term research could reveal unmeasured advantages like improved resilience, creativity, and focus. The takeaway, while nature-based programs may not be a universal fix, they hold potential for targeted mental health support, offering a low-cost, accessible way to nurture the well-being of vulnerable kids. Creative thinking is a skill that shapes our ability to innovate and adapt in a fast-changing world. This report recounts the 2022 PISA assessment, and it measures the 15-year-old's creative thinking abilities across diverse contexts like writing, social problem-solving, and scientific exploration. The results. Singapore led globally, with countries like Canada, Korea, and Australia also performing above average. Interestingly, academic excellence was not a prerequisite for creativity. About half of the top creative thinkers didn't excel in traditional subjects like math or reading. 
girls outshine boys across all tasks, reflecting their stronger beliefs in creativity and openness to new perspectives. And yet, social economic disparities remain a challenge. Disadvantaged students often struggle to showcase their creative potential. So the study emphasized that fostering creative thinking requires intentional teaching practices, valuing student creativity, offering time for exploration, and incorporating creative tasks into the curriculum. As education evolves, nurturing creativity is key to equipping students for the challenges of tomorrow. AI tools like ChatGPT are transforming all classrooms and all learning. It offers support for brainstorming and tackling tough math problems. But here's the catch. Students often lack the skills or maturity to know where AI ends and their responsibility begins. This research study tested 1,000 high school students with AI. After a math lesson, some used ChatGPT or a tutor enhanced AI to practice, while others relied on traditional methods. Initially, AI seemed unbeatable. Students with basic ChatGPT scored 48% better in practice, and those with a tutor version scored 127% better. But during a closed book test, their advantage vanished. Those who relied on ChatGPT scored 17% below peers who studied traditionally. And why is that? Students often used AI as a shortcut, skipping critical problem-solving steps. But AI isn't the enemy. When designed to guide learning by asking follow-up questions or withholding direct answers, it boosts understanding. Now, many other studies, including my own, about embracing podcasting in an era of generative AI demonstrates that multiple technologies, especially AI, can be powerful tools, but it has to be used well for capable teachers and learners. Managing a classroom is no easy feat. Dozens of personalities, spontaneous distractions, and as this research study shows, there's a ripple effect of social cues. Researchers discovered that even subtle disruptions spread like wildfire. In this study with 180 students, a few were tasked with quietly sabotaging attention, slouching, looking bored, and not taking notes. The result? Students seated nearby followed suit, losing focus, writing half as many notes, and scoring nine points lower on a quiz. Researchers call this inattention contagion, a phenomenon where distraction spreads through proximity. This builds on previous findings about more obvious distractions like cell phones, laptops, or even fidget toys. Not every lesson can dazzle the student. So to counteract inattention, experienced teachers recommend co-creating classroom norms, setting clear rules for transitions, designing engaging lessons, and strategically seating students to minimize disruptions. Thoughtful preparation might just be your best defense against classroom chaos. The effect of COVID-19 on education are proving to be more enduring than expected. A recent study revealed nearly 80% of preschool and kindergarten teachers report their students are struggling compared to pre-pandemic peers, particularly with emotional regulation and literacy. These so-called pandemic babies are less able to hold a pencil, manage emotions, or identify shapes and letters. The challenges extend beyond early childhood. Research shows math scores across grades 1 to 8 haven't rebounded to pre-pandemic levels, in high school seniors, college readiness has dropped to a three-decade low. Chronic absenteeism remains alarmingly high, with educators and district leaders citing a cultural shift in how students and families perceive schooling. What's the solution? For early educators, it may mean emphasizing routines and self-regulation. For district leaders, it's about making school more engaging. Addressing these challenges heads-on is essential to avoid a generational learning gap that could impact students for years to come. Did you know a little social anxiety can be good for learning? This study explores how peer-to-peer -peer teaching impacts students' brains, and the results are fascinating. Researchers equipped 99 university students with advanced brain sensors and assigned them to one of three tasks, rereading a lesson, teaching themselves, or teaching a peer about the Doppler effect. Those who taught a classmate showed the highest brain activity in social and cognitive areas, and significantly outperformed others on recall and problem-solving tests. Why is that? Explaining to peers activated their brain's feedback systems, encouraging them to use more detailed examples and adapt their explanations. The presence of an audience raised the stakes, pushing them to engage deeply and think critically. To harness this in your classroom, try turn and talk strategies, assign peer teaching roles, or gamify lessons to spark collaboration. 
peer-to-peer -peer learning isn't just fun, it's brain fuel for success. Mistakes aren't just okay, they're powerful learning tools. This study found that when teachers spend significant time focusing on students' mathematical errors through collaborative discussions, teaching became much more effective. The study observed eight graders preparing for a high-stakes algebra exam. One group attended traditional instruction, while another alternated between practice mini-tests and sessions dedicated to analyzing and learning from their mistakes. Both groups improved similarly on the final exam, but teachers in the learning from errors group achieved the same results in half the time. What makes this work? Teachers who explore the why behind errors and engage students in fixing them boosted engagement and personal relevance. The collaborative approach rather than lecturing proved key. Embracing mistakes shifted classroom culture, strengthened relationships, and improved motivation. Techniques like ungraded practice tests, group discussions of errors, and playful activities like find the best error highlight the transformative potential of learning from mistakes. And that's my list for 2024 most impactful research. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with fellow educators or students. Remember, mistakes aren't the end, they're just the beginning of deeper learning. Subscribe for more insights and check out some of my other educational videos. Thanks for watching.